Hey guys, I um, bump, 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 wanted to talk to you a bit about the After Realm, uh, the webcomic that uh, you know I've been doing for a while now, um, and um, I am massively reworking it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so uh, I wanted to kind of show you guys what I was doing. So when I originally did the After Realm, um, the idea was. It was basically a sort of prequel to a, a print comic that I'm that I have planned, um, and I actually have a lot of it drawn. Um, and the the web comic started out as sort of a, a prequel ad for the um, that would run into that comic being published. So, you know, I did this little adventure. By time all these different changes happened to it from the platform and to where it eventually went up and stuff. It had gone through all these sort of weird Frankenstein things because I had started it as like an infinite scroll and then I changed it to like regular comic size and then it ended up being on a site that has infinite scroll stuff and blah, blah, blah. So um, once I had all the pages together and the story was pretty complete, I realized that if I wanted to do more for it than to just be this sort of prequel comic, that the story needed to be much stronger. Um, because at that point, it was just an adventure. And the adventure was just to kind of get people excited about what this print comic would be. Um, but now I'm not exactly sure when I'm going to do that print comic. And then I'm taking After Realm and this prequel version of After Realm and making it into an original graphic novel when the webcomic is done. But that meant massively, massively re reworking stuff. Stuff that didn't work, that worked fine in the webcomic, but doesn't work as a standalone um, graphic novel um, uh, that has to do with pacing um, story structure um, all the basics they're very different from like what you can do in a webcomic that's kind of meant as like an advertisement thing versus a graphic novel that's really supposed to be a kick-ass self-contained story that hopefully people want to see more of so I want to show you the crazy shit that I've been doing um, I'm not sure how clear. So you're looking at the thumbnails here of the this original outline of um, After Realm, how it was. I'm going to walk you through this really quick. So I had this opening page, um, this scroll. Uh, then we get into Una and her mother. And you can see there's only two panels here. There's three panels here. There's two panels here. Uh, there's four panels here, kind of. One panel. So imagine this as a webcomic. It, it's tough, right, to, to, to just get weekly pages of just these few panels. Um, and I also realized if I want to do this as, because I Frankenstein this from this, you know, infinite scroll, if you're reading this as an actual graphic novel, there's all kinds of problems, I feel, for the way um, this is paced with these, these few panels on a pages. Other comics do that, and they do it successfully because that's how they planned it. I feel that this is less successful because it's Frankenstein. It wasn't planned out this way. Um, so let's just scroll through here just to show you some of these pages. Um, and I'm telling you right now, some stuff like this is gone. That's going to be gone. Like I'm deleting stuff. I'm getting rid of entire pages. Um, and then what I've also done is gone in, and this is harder to do, is to um, combine pages. So just really quickly walk you through some of this. Uh, this is a new page. That's a new page. Um, new page. 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 Um, new pages that I haven't drawn yet. I can see my photo reference here. This is a place I love to go and write. Um, sometimes I'll just kind of trace over the basic rock shapes and stuff like that. This page here was originally. Um, you see the panels down here. This was um, these were two different pages. This is one full page, and then this was part of another page. And then I deleted one of the backgrounds. Um, let me see if I can pull up that original. I think I got it right here. Yeah. So here was that original page. And then doing another redraw, I needed to have a good establishing shot of um, Grimhilder. She's sort of the, the master of arms, um, training them. So this was a splash page. And then this page over here was going to be just as it is. And then I decided, well, I need to condense a lot of this stuff. So 
Um, cause also what happened with all that padding of, of making the panels longer, the, the inciting incident, the, the thing that makes the story happen, um, the, the changes that the character needs to, to, to make early on in the story weren't happening until like halfway through. So that's why I needed to just paste this tighter. So I went through and I cut these pages out and then I combined them. So here's an example of, uh, of a combined page. I think that stayed the same. Okay, this over here, you can see these panels, these, let me reverse this. Um, no, go back. <laughs> All right, so this is the original page here. One, two, three. So what I did here was I combined this page and I cropped these panels together, tightened them up so they would fit, and then took this page of these panels and then deleted one of them to cr crunch it all here. So nothing wrong with this kind of storytelling, even with this negative space here, I really liked it. Um, but what happens is I end up um, creating too much, too many pages early on before anything really happens or before the character starts to make choices. Um, so, uh, you know, I really needed to tighten it up. And it was a pain in the ass. I mean, I was really tempted to just leave these open pages like this, but I had to be honest, when I was reading a complete PDF of everything, it was frustrating on, on all kinds of levels. So I just had to make the dive. I had to do stuff like cut pages out, add new pages. Um, and that's not, you know, I always talk about not being a perfectionist, that perfection gets in the way. But there is definitely a line between perfection and being lazy or... Um, it's just a slippery slope between doing, uh, between being tied up too much in what you know you should be doing and just doing it, you know. Um, let me see what other, these are new pages here. I think, yeah, I kept that the same. This, I combined some pages again. What is it at? Okay, yeah. So I combined this page, which was just a single page, and that looks great. I really like that, um, and that would look nice in the graphic novel. But again, I needed to get sort of the the inciting incidents to happen. Well, the, the real inciting incident happens earlier, but then you need the character to make the choice, kind of a character inciting incident. Um, I needed to get that happen um, earlier. So here we are on page 14, and it's just a splash page of somebody jumping. You know, looks great, but it needs more of this. So I'm going to have to. I could probably import the colors from this and just plop it onto here easy enough. I might be able to do the same with down here or I might have to recolor it, I'm not sure. Uh, Taki and I obviously work together on that. Um, see, that's the same page. This is another combined page here. So I took this page, which was just two panels. Again, on its own, it looks nice, but you know, um, I needed to move the story along early. Um, you need to, to make your character be in a position where she has to make tough choices. You know, by like page, if it's a hundred page book, you want it to happen somewhere in the first quarter. And here we are, this is page 25. And we're still not quite there yet. Um, so I combine this page with this page. Here's another combined page of what was the snowball fight fight that was just three panels and here I combined everything these two pages together and it looks good it's gonna be nice and tight uh, that stays the same this got tightened up as well so this is a combination of this page and then this page and I cut this out because here I added more pages I'll have to get into inking them and stuff, you know. But right now they're just layouts, and then I think I'll letter them. This way I can get a good look at, pardon me, the page or the book. You know, by having it all lettered, even over some layouts, it gives me a better sense of the story than, you know, doing the right thing. Um, here's another page that was combined. So this is originally these three panels. Again, they kind of look fine, but I needed to move the story more. So um, I combined this page and the previous page. Also, I never really liked this face. I might end up redoing it. I'm not sure, but it doesn't look nearly as bad or bad. I don't know what it is exactly about it I don't like, but it looks better smaller anyway, so that, that works out nicely. 
Um, another combination page was these two panels. I cut out a lot of this on the top. So I kept this first panel the same. I cut out a lot of this at the top to just squeeze our bodies down here. We don't need all this extra rock stuff. Um, which is one of the reasons why I did, like this is a pre-existing background, these rocks here. And one of the reasons I do that was because I knew at the time it would be covered with a lot of word balloons. I actually thought it was going to be much more wordy than this is, and it's not. Um, so I think the first time I was doing the lettering pass, too, I was using much larger balloons and fonts. So I just knew that this was all going to be covered. So when I cut it out here, it's it's not a loss, you know. Um, one of the reasons I have reused some backgrounds is because I know they're going to get obliterated by word balloons or special effects or, or something. And it saves time for me to have something back there that's not something your eyes are going to focus on. You're not supposed to see it at all. Um, and that's a good way to, to save some time in your process. Um, again, I'm not a perfectionist, so I don't care. People think it's cheating or they don't like it. I bet you haven't even noticed most of the time or hardly ever. And if you are, that means the stuff going on in the foreground and things that they're saying aren't good enough to keep your attention and you're staring into the background of shit. You know, and again, it's meant to be covered, it's meant to be disposable. Um, it's just helps to fill in, it's like backlighting or distortion with music and shit. Um, so combine these two pages, and there are, are complete pages that I'm just throwing out, you know, that I drew from scratch that aren't, you know, saved backgrounds and stuff. But when you're in the editing process and you realize that a scene isn't working or it's superfluous or it's repeating itself, for whatever reason it has to go, you can't hold on to it just because you love it. Or because, or just because you put a lot of work into it, which is the worst excuse for not changing something. I put a lot of time and effort into this, and I'm going to keep it because of that. It's it's going to detract from your actual work. Um, it's another example of some combined pages. Um, and I've done this for like half of the book. I think half of the story I've completely rewritten and drawn. Um, and one of the ways that I figured out what my problems were was like I knew there were storytelling issues because of the formatting and stuff I was so lost in the woods as they say or in the weeds um, one of the best things you can do is to confide in your friends people that you trust so I put together a PDF of the way it was and said look guys I'm lost in the weeds here man I, I, I you know I know this isn't working I don't know why and I sent it off to some friends and uh, you know they hit me back with a couple of notes that were just great guidelines they weren't specifically like oh this panel that panel it was stuff like well una has two goals that she wants and you need to have your main character like they can have other things that they want but in the forefront of what's guiding them has to be one thing one singular thing that guides your character otherwise they're riding two horses was a great uh, phrase that um, sam humphreys said when he was looking at this and that was like the first major compass change that I need it go oh that's right yeah I have her wanting these two different things so I had to cut it down to one thing and that was was a great help and then you know uh, Sam and Brian uh, Brian Bendis and um, Sean McManus and some other friends gave me some really good feedback on just things that made me go, okay this is what I need to do and then I went back to the well so to speak um, I went back to um, some basics I um, I went back to like the writer's wheel, you know, um, the, the hero's journey stuff, um, the Robert McKee story wheel, the um, Mark Harmon story wheel, um, uh, the but and therefore patterns that uh, the um, the guys who make South Park follow. I forget my names offhand. Um, there's lots of great tools, and I'll show make another video about that, um, about some writing tools and some templates. They're not templates that you follow, like you fill your story this way, but they're kind of like questions that you need to ask about your story to see if those beats are in there or those moments are in there. Um, and then once they are, then you figure out a way, or at least I do, um, how to turn those things on their head, how to ch change the expectations. Because um, uh, you don't, you don't want to just follow a story template. You can, just, you can do that and just fill in the blanks like Mad Libs, but that's not creativity. That's not storytelling. Um, anyway, these things are tools. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll make another video about that. Anyway, I just want to share this with you guys. Um, I'm not exactly sure what I'm doing with the webcomic right now because there's still a lot of work and I've kind of, kind of caught up to where I was. So I might just have to put it on a hiatus until I bump up <laughs> more pages. Um, it's crazy. So this project, After Realm, I probably have 150 pages drawn. 
um, I've cut a bunch of pages and added a new bunch of pages. So I think by time any of this ever really sees print, I'll probably have about 200 to 250 pages worth of shit that nobody has seen. Um, but that's why I'm a comic book artist. I'm not in here because, um, well, the only reason I'm, I'm in comics is because I want to tell stories. I want to tell my stories. Um, so that's why I can just sit there at night on the couch and instead of like chilling out and watching TV, I'm working. Um, that's why I'm working as, as many hours in a day that I can. You know, it's the main thing that I like to do. Maybe too much because it drives me crazy. Sometimes I'll get, you know, crazy from being in the house too much and I just need to get out and go hiking or something. But generally I'm working, you know, seven days a week, um, full days mostly. Um, and it's hard, but I love it. And, I, and I'm sure a lot of you guys are struggling with that, these kind of hours and stuff too. And most of you probably actually have jobs while you're still doing this. Um, and uh, that's amazing to me, you know, to, to have that kind of dedication. But if you're doing that, if you've got a full-time job and you're still making comics, um, even if you're only getting a couple pages done a week or a weekend or something like that because you, you've got the, the full-time job, you're doing it because you love it. That means you're going to make it. You're going to be making comics if you can do that kind of stuff, if you have that kind of dedication. Um, whether or not we make money or not or make a living at, at it, it's hard to say. There's no promises. There's no promises for me. I mean, this could all be a waste of time. You know, Maybe I won't find a publisher. Maybe if I do, it'll lose money. I don't know. But um, I'm what you call a lifer, and uh, that means I'm in this for life. And I'm assuming most of you are too. And however you can balance out your life to get this stuff done, um, do it. I applaud it. And I admire you guys who are working nine to fives and still doing this stuff because this is hard and I'm doing it full time. <laughs> so I can't imagine how tough it is um, otherwise. And uh, all right, so that's it. I uh, just wanted to give you guys an update on what I was doing with After Realm, why I was doing it, and to give you examples of how far sometimes you need to go. You know, there's an editing cliche you have to kill your darlings. Um, sometimes you have to cut out your favorite scenes, take out your favorite pages, and it's not just something creators say, it's something you have to do. Um, so I'm sharing that with you guys. I like to share both my failures and my successes with you. And um, and there you go. Um, so I'm going to make some more videos in a little bit, some some more creative stuff, uh, something process related. And um, but in the meantime, yeah, just want to share this with you, and I uh, hope you get something out of it. Take care.